In this video, we're going to be looking at standard deviation. Okay, so let's start off by looking at these three shares. Now, if you don't know what shares are, shares is an investment some people make with their money and they try to get some return on their money. So here I've got three shares, share A, share B and share C. Now for each one, I've got some percentage returns they did in previous years in no particular order. For example, with share B, you can see it gave a 10% return every single time. But with share A and share C, it differs now and again. So I want you to choose which share would you put your money into. Okay, so you've probably chosen a share. Now what we're going to do is work out the average return each one gave to help us choose a share. Now you should be able to work out the average. You just add them up and divide it by how many there is. For example, share B, you just do 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 40. And you divide it by how many there is, and there's four values. So it'll be that 40 divided by four, which is 10. I'm sure you've got no problems working at the mean. So go ahead and do that for all three of them. And if you've done that, you should have got 10 for all three. And the X with a little line in the top, that basically means the mean. It's a shorthand for writing the mean. Sometimes they refer to it as X bar. So here, incredibly, all the shares gave the same average return. They all had the same mean, 10, 10 and 10. So on average, they're all the same. So which one do we choose? So I'll give you a moment to think about that. Now, I personally would have chosen share B. Why is that? Because it's more consistent. If I was with share C, sometimes I might have got lucky and got a 20% return. But look at some other values it gave. Sometimes it gave no return. So it's very risky. Share A is not that bad. It's always giving a decent return. Share B, I'd say, is the most consistent. So in these three cases, it's obvious which one's more consistent. However, sometimes there might be more values and it might not be as obvious. And that's where standard deviation comes in. It's a calculation which measures how consistent the values are. And I'll show you the formula for standard deviation now. So this is the formula and you need to memorize it. This is the formula for standard deviation. This Greek letter here means standard deviation. Then we have a big square root sign. And then we have an E looking sign. That E looking sign just means sum of. And it's telling us the sum of the X squared values. You're summing all the X values, but not the X values, the squared versions of the X values. And then you're dividing it by N. And N is just simply how many terms you've got. Then we have a minus. And then we, inside the brackets, we have sum of x. And that simply means add up all the x values, or simply the values you have, and divide it by n again. And of course, all of that is squared. Now, you should notice something about the bit inside the brackets. Adding all the values up, dividing by how many there is, of course, that's simply the mean. So just notice that's the mean in there. So you can just put x bar in there if you like which is shorthand, which is shorthand for the mean. So let's go ahead and try to use this formula. Okay, so here I've got some values. So two, three, three, four, and five. And we're going to work out the standard deviation for these values. Okay, so first we know n is five. Remember n is how many terms you've got. And we can clearly see there's five values here. Okay, and here we've got some of the x's. Some of the x's just means add the values up. 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Sum of the x's. Sometimes you'll hear that e sign refer to a sigma. Remember, it's a Greek letter. But simply just know it means sum of. So we've worked out the sum of the x values. Now in that formula, we also got sum of x squared. Now sum of x squared just means add the values up, but not the values as they are, the squared versions. So 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. 
and you add those up, you get sigma x squared. And that gives us 63. Now we've got all the things we need for our formula. So we're just going to fill it in. And putting that into your calculator, you get standard deviation equals 1.02. Remember, this is something your calculator can do for you. But I'm showing you how to do it manually first. Okay, so back to those shares. So they all have the same mean. So we're going to work out the standard deviation for all three of them. Remember, standard deviation measures consistency. It measures, on average, how far away is each value from the mean value. But if that sounded complicated, just remember, it measures how consistent the data is. And look at share B. It's perfectly consistent. Every value is the mean. Because remember, the mean for share B was 10. And every value is 10. So the standard deviation should literally be 0. On average, every value is 0 away from the mean. Share C, we're expecting a high standard deviation. Every value is very far from the mean. And share A, something in the middle. Okay, so for share A, we've got how many terms there is, the sum of the values, and sum of the squares of all the values. Let's just go ahead and fill in the formula. And you can go ahead and just put that into your calculator. And that gives us 3.16. Let's do the same for share B. Of course, there's also four terms, and the sum of the values is 40, and the sum of the squares of the values is 400. Again, let's just put that into the calculator, and we get zero just as we expected. And let's do it for the final one. So we've got the things we need for the formula. Let's go ahead and put it in. And there we go. We've got the highest standard deviation for share C. I would definitely advise you to memorize the standard deviation formula. It's a big must. OK, so this time our data is in a frequency table. We could take the data out of frequency table and just write 0, 4 times. So it'll be 0, 0, 0, 0. And there's five lots of ones. We can write 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on, and just work it out as we did. But there's a nice formula you can also memorize to work out standard deviation when your data is in a frequency table. And it's this one here. And it doesn't look much different, so you won't have any problems memorizing it. And this bit here again is the mean. And from GCSEs, you should be able to work out the mean from a frequency table. And when you're doing that, you're doing something along the lines of what I've shaded here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're going to make some more columns first. We've got a column for fx. And we need a column for fx squared. Now fx just means f times the x, the frequency times the x. For example, for the first one, it will be 4 times 0. So you can just fill in that column, and it's not too difficult. The next column is f times the square of the x value. So it will be 4 times 0 squared for the first one. So, And these are the values you should have got for that. Now, for that formula, we needed the sum of these fx's. So we'll just sum that column up. And we needed the sum of the frequencies too, so we need to sum that column too. And of course, we need the sum of the fx squared column. Now it looks like we've got everything we need for the formula. So this is our formula again, and we want to just fill it in. And I hope you've memorized the formula. So the key thing here, remember, is we made two more columns, an fx column and an f x squared column and then we sum the three columns up and of course you'll just put this into your calculator and you get 1.2 okay this time our data is in intervals now it's not much different what we do here we just need one extra column and it's the midpoint column which is extra because these values are in intervals but we need a value we can't take the whole interval so for the x's, we'll just take the midpoints. We'll use the midpoints as our x values. And if you've got problems working out midpoints, just add up the lower and the upper part. So here's 0 plus 10 and divide by 2. 0 plus 10 is 10, divide by 2 is 5. And you can do that for all of them. And we've got all the midpoints here. Now we'll just do what we did last time. The x column is the midpoint column, by the way. So we'll fill in the fx column, 
the f is 2, the x is 5, so 2 times 5 is 10. And we can do that for all of them. And we'll fill in the fx squared column, it will be f which is 2 times 5 squared this time. And we can do that for all of them as well. Now we need to sum up some of these columns. It looks like we've got everything we need for the formula now. So here's the formula again, let's go ahead and fill it in. And this you'll put into your calculator and we'll get 16.5. Okay, so here's the original standard deviation formula. The one we use when it's not in a frequency table. Now there's one more thing I wanted to mention. Sometimes we talk about variance. Now variance is not much different to standard deviation. It's just a squared version of standard deviation. Basically, the standard deviation without the square root. So squaring it, of course the standard deviation sign gets a square on it, and the square root goes away. Now this is called the variance. So for the variance formula, just remember it's the standard deviation formula without the square root. And the standard deviation sign has got a square on it. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.